Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kenny, and this is How to Get Away with Murder, Season 3, Episode 7, and the name of this episode is called it Mother's Intuition. Alright, so, let's just get right in this. Uh, it opens up with um, Annalise is in jail, and uh, next thing you know, she, she's um, talking to... Um, she's talking to us, to, um, some detectives, which pretty much let her know, because they first they asked her, you know, do you want a lawyer, do you, do you actually want a lawyer to, um, to be here to represent you? And she said no, but then they let her know that she's being charged with, um, arson and first degree murder. And she's like, okay, so what's your source? And they said that we have an anonymous source where where um so pretty much someone has snitched on Annalise. The question is who has snitched on Annalise? Um which explains why she ended up in jail. So it goes back to two weeks prior. We actually see that Wes uh is actually talking to uh um, to the investigators from New York about the case of um, William Mahoney. And they bring up uh, the fact that Charles Mahoney is now being, um, is now being looked at as a, as a prime suspect in his murder. And they ask him, did you see Charles that night? This fool decides to lie and said that, yeah, I saw him across the street. He was very dismissive to me, so that led me to cross the street to talk to William. And then the next thing I know, William was killed. He tells this to Annalise. Annalise immediately goes in on him and, and said that, why the hell did you lie? Why, do you, why didn't you just stick to the same story that you had before? Why, did, why, why would you lie? Because at the end of the day, yeah, Charles Mahoney's being seen as a suspect, but we don't know whether he had an alibi that night. So, right now, like, the fact that you said that is crazy because you don't even know this man had an alibi and yet you just somewhat lied to the, to the investigators, which could, in a way, fall back on you. So I thought that was a, that was a good point. Uh, next, uh, we actually get the case of the week. The case involves this woman named Edith, who uh, was, we actually, when we first get introduced to Edith um, through um, um, a news reporting where, you know, that she's pretty much in a hospital bed after being poisoned with antifreeze, and she's pouring out her heart and this emotion, and then she's like, who would want to do this? Who would want to do this to their own mother? So we come to find out the case is involving her three children. She has two sons and a daughter, and the daughter is, is the middle child. And they're pretty much being charged with attempted murder of their own mother. And that her, them, they pretty much poisoned their mother with antifreeze. Now, that's pretty much the case. And pretty much, uh, Annalise is like, look, this is uh, a shut-in case because there's so much evidence that points to the fact that all three of them hated their mother. And the mother pretty much, they pretty much have a family business where the mother's the head of it. All three of them work with her. And we later, we later find out within, within this case that all three of them couldn't stand her ass, but then the mother is a complete soulless bitch, and she just attacks them constantly. She berates them, she embarrasses them, she degrades them. So there's enough and there's enough you know ammunition for all three of the siblings to want to kill to kill this woman. Even her oldest son even said that. Look, you name me somebody that didn't want to kill her, I'll buy this fool a drink. I was like, damn! They really hated their mother. And the mother even would pick at them, like, when the when the, um, the daughter started to, um, you know, she started to develop during puberty, she had really digressed. 
and the mother would never buy her a bra, so she pretty much just let her, you know, walk around with no bra and these big ass titties, and she started calling her names like, you know, you know, you know, Judge Karen, and she made fun of, um, of the other son, who I think is, uh, the youngest, and he's pretty much the real nerdy type or whatever, and she's, and, um, she called him masturbating, so she started calling him, like, Jerky Steve, I mean, she, the mother is mean as hell, so, Annalise says, like, look, this is a shutting case, they're gonna go down for this, so, she pretty much says that, look, anybody who can offer me any other type of information or anybody that can find a way to crack this case, I will give them an A on the midterm. So, that's how that starts. Next thing you know, uh, you know, they're back into the workroom, all of, you know, all of them after we learn about the case. Next thing you know, uh... Wes is like, oh, uh, I gotta go question, um, this, uh, this wait, this, um, this witness who's a waiter. I'm gonna see what's up with him. And then all of a sudden, Laura's like, oh, yeah, I also have someone that I need to look into as well. So they both leave off, and I'm like, y'all about to go smash. It's so apparent that's what the fuck y'all about to do. And I think even Connor was like, you know... I wonder, are they going to go kill Frank? <laughs> like, Connor's a mess. Next thing you know, we see them back at Laurel's apartment. They are going to get in. You know, she about to go down and um, give um, give Wes some lip service. And then next you know, the camel pans out. And guess who's fucking standing there? Frank. Right outside of her door. And I'm like, wow. Frank has, Frank is right there in the damn house. So, it's like, Frank is to the point where Frank can just enter in and out of people's shit, and you won't even see him coming. So, as I said before, yeah, Frank is dangerous, but then again, you know, what we also witnessed in the past episodes, Frank has a childlike, you know, mentality. And that pretty much is why Frank does the things he does, and why he's so impulsive because he still has that childlike state of mind. It's like he just acts on impulse and doesn't think through anything, really. All right, so that's what happened there. Next, we actually see that um, Annalise is, um, is at her AA meeting. And you can tell she's doing really good. You know, she hasn't been drinking, which is why she's been eating junk food like a mad person. I mean, we've seen her eating cake. she eating chips in the bathroom. She's doing all kinds of shit. And, uh, while she's there, who other than President Hargrove, she's up there telling her story. And her alcoholism pretty much got so bad that she lost custody of her children. And she even talked about being so drunk that she had her children with her. She literally fell asleep at the wheel. The car was still on and the, her son had to flag someone to come to their attention because the mother was so drunk that she was unresponsive. And she said that her husband uh, pretty much, uh, they only, they not only divorced, but he got custody of the children, and now she has supervised visits with her children, and it's like her children don't have any respect for her, they don't have no connection with her, it's like they look at her as if she's a stranger, and it's tearing her up inside, and Annalise is hearing this, and, and, and like you can definitely tell that Annalise is somewhat touched by by her by her story, and that you know she can relate you know to the fact that she's a mother, and that she longs to have a relationship with her children, just like Annalise really longed for a relationship with her child.
All right, so next thing you know, um, afterwards, after the meeting, um, Annalise meets this guy in AA who obviously is very attractive and he kind of flirts with her and he kind of walks off. Next thing you know, um, Hargrove was like, oh yeah, you better watch out for him because he flirts with all the women up in here. They start talking and next thing you know, um, you know, they, they get into it. And she's like, look, I wouldn't be going through this shit right now if it wasn't for you, President Hargrove. Like, you know, you doing all of this shit led me here. She's like, oh no, sweetie. What led you here was the fact that you slapped your client. So, you're here to rebuild yourself just like I'm trying to rebuild myself. So don't put you being here on me. Because you brought yourself here. <laughs> All right. Next, you know, we uh we get a scene where they're all together, you know, all the team of five, and um uh you know we actually starting to see that Michaela and Asha actually make a good connection because they both really goofy, and they both messing with um olive oil because olive oil is talking to this dude Thomas. They about to go on their third date or whatever, and uh next thing you know we see Connor and Oliver talking and. Oliver is not trying to, and um, Olive Oil is not trying to give up any of the tea. She's like, uh, you know, and like kind of like, so is you think it's getting serious? You know, you know, you guys been going on a few dates. I mean, where do you see this heading? And he's like, well, I, I really, I really don't know. And I'm like, yes, because at the end of the day, you have emotional diarrhea, and. I'm like, yes, because you have emotional diarrhea and you don't know what the hell is going on. So, I, I was like, okay, that was that was interesting because we can definitely tell that we like we already known from already that Connor still has feelings for Oliver, but Oliver is such an emotional wreck that he won't actually admit to it because you know he's obviously feeling this new guy. But then again, a part of him is on the fence, and we later on figure out why that's the case. All right, next thing you know, hold up. All right. Then afterwards, uh, while um, they're in the workroom working or whatever, Asha gets the mother load and actually finds out that one of the co-workers that they work with is um, pretty much had, you know, because you know, they pretty much are looking at emails, looking at any type of correspondence to try to crack the case involving the siblings and to see if they can get the siblings off, if it's even possible. But Asha finds something that one of their co-workers actually had this article about antifreeze that he emailed, that was, that was in his email. So they're thinking, wow, uh, you know, so they bring their siblings in and they, and they pretty much let them know about this email that one of their co-workers um, had, you know, which was about, um, which was about, you know, antifreeze poisoning. Well, all three, I mean, the both brothers is like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, we can finally get off. We actually have something. And uh, next thing you know, uh, sorry about that. Um, I, whoever it is, I'll call them back. Uh -huh. <laughs> so after, after, um, after they mention this, we actually see that Karen, the daughter, is like, um, I don't think we can use this. And they're like, why not? And he said, um, well, because me and that guy who, who um, sent that email, uh, he actually sent it to me and me and him to have an affair. So they're like, oh, oh fuck that. Um, <laughs> you know, the brothers was like, shit, um, drop this bitch and just represent us. 
And then Annalise lets them know, like, look, this is a conspiracy, and you all are attached to this. So even though the correspondence was sent to her, you all three are seen as suspects because all of you are affiliated with this situation. And then they start going in on the system like, you stupid bitch. I blah, 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 blah. And they just go back and forth. And I'm like laughing like shit. Because I'm like, wow, this is crazy. But then Annalise sets them straight. She gets it out. She's like, first of all, y'all can continue to bicker like a bunch of bitches. Or we can actually figure out, you know, what what actually happened. And we can put this together. So, y'all need to calm the fuck down. And y'all and need to focus. So, she immediately breaks it up and just lets them know, like, look, y'all need to blow the fuck up and cut the bullshit. You know, I ain't here for this old sibling, sibling bullshit that y'all got going right now. Focus and let's get, and let's get on with this. Next thing you know, we see Nate at, um, we see, uh, not, not Nate, I'm sorry, we actually see Wes at the courthouse, and he runs into Nate. Now, Nate is on some other shit. I mean, since he's been, you know, spooning with Atwood, Nate's on some other shit, and right now, I'm not feeling Nate right now. But then he stops, you know, Wes, and was like, you know, how you doing, or whatever. He's like, I know that the, um, that the, um, investigators from New York been looking at you about William Mahoney, you know, you know. What, what's going on with that? He says that, look, I got a lawyer. He was like, uh, who? Annalise? And then Wes is like, nah, Annalise actually refers one to me. He's like, hmm, watch your back. And walked away. I'm like, okay, Nate, you really doing too much right now. Now that you've been, you've been, um, spooning with, with, um, with, Af with Afro Puss, now you just come in a totally different tune. So, and then, we also see that, you know, they had this um, preliminary hearing or whatever, and we actually see within this preliminary hearing, you know, Edith is on trial and the siblings is, is there, and we actually see that the mother is off the hook. Like, she is just so disrespectful. We actually are seeing that, yeah, who wouldn't want to kill this bitch? Because she was just blatant out mean. You know, she even goes in, like, they're, they're telling stories about, you know, their involvement with their mother, and she's just giving her comments, like, oh, yeah, you know, she, she really was uh, kind of out there for her age. And, you know, well, the, the thing that really got me was the scene where um, the youngest son, he was talking about... Uh, about her humiliating him in front of this girl that he liked and he really was in love with her. And then the mother was and then the mother was like, Oh child, you were never gonna smash that. You weren't gonna get that, you know. If anything, he's a virgin. He's always gonna be a virgin. He'll probably be a virgin to the day he died. No woman's ever gonna wanna sleep with him. And <laughs> he's like, you know what? I'll be happy the day that you die. So it's like more and more we're seeing that these siblings have every motive to want to kill their mother. You know, and I I was just completely blown away with that. That was that was really funny. And and then it, it's just like we really see that this case is everything and that the mother Edith is a is a hot fucking mess. And that, yeah, she, she does, you know, disrespect her children. And that she does make them feel like they're small. And the fact that they all work together in the family business, they're, com they're just attached with her 24-7. Next thing you know, we actually have Western Law. They're in bed, you know, after having sex. They're having pillow talk. Wes makes a confession that he wanted to get at her on the first day of school when she interrupted him when Annalise asked him a question. You know, he had a thing for her then, but he didn't think he was her type, so he didn't go for her. They, like, pretty much spooning or whatever, and the next thing you know, uh, it comes, we come to find out that Charles Mahoney actually has an alibi for the night in question. 
which is why Annalise told him you should not have done what you did by lying to the to the investigators about him being there that night because now it's being proved that he wasn't there at all so now that this fool got an alibi everybody's all you know all at Annalise you know the Keating Five because it's like Annalise doesn't know what to do now and and you know what's just like well what about Eve and she's like look you know Eve is not even involved Eve's in San Francisco and um, I haven't spoken to her in weeks so because she lied about Eve being being involved and that Eve being on top of this uh, they immediately go off and you know they have all this animosity towards Annalise and Annalise is like look it seemed to me that you motherfuckers need to get off your shit off your chest and the funny thing about it I have always been loyal to you guys I have done a lot to I have done a lot to protect you guys and me lying is my form of protecting you and seeing to it that you guys you know are safe but you know what since y'all all got so much shit to say to me okay I'm gonna sit myself down here all y'all come for me it's like I said come for me and then the next thing you know they all going back and forth you know uh, Michaela's talking about you sent me over there to um, you sent me over there to Caleb knowing what, and you knew what was going to happen and she's like I didn't tell you to sleep with that fool and she's like yeah but you knew I was vulnerable and you put me in a vulnerable situation which led me to you know get sucked up I'm like Michaela let's be real you just have bad. You just have a bad call when it came to men because the first three men you've been involved with has been some bullshit. So you can't put that on Annalise for you. And it's like you just really see how ungrateful and spoiled the Keating Five really are because every time shit goes down or shit kind of falls to the wayside, they're quick to blame Annalise for it. So she's just letting them have their little moment. And you know, and, and then like. Laura's like, you, I try to do everything you want me to do. I follow every rule you say. It's like, it's like I'm like your puppet. And then Connor's like, well, if you would have let us go to the police when Sam, when Sam was killed, none of this would have happened. You know, and, you know, Ash is like, you know, I had a good family, and all of a sudden I lost my family, and it's like, you know, here was, I think I was dealing with a bully, but it's like, you're even a bigger bully than my father or Sinclair. So I'm like, uh, Ash, um, nobody told you to run over Sinclair because you got in, the, in your feelings about what you said about your dad. So, Ash, you're in your situation because of you. Cut it the fuck out. But all four of them had something to say. Then she goes to um, Wes, and Wes is like, no, I don't have nothing to say. You know how I feel. So she's like, okay. Now that we've gotten that out, get some sleep. We have a new day tomorrow. And I'm like, that's why I fucked with Annalise, because Annalise is a true G. She is a true boss. Yeah, she got an evil side to her. Yeah, she's very manipulative. She's very... Um, She's very trivial in the way she does things, but Annalise stays true to who she is, and that's why we love Annalise. Alright, next we get Olive Oil and Thomas. Thomas is that guy who's, um, who, who is an acupuncture specialist that he met from the last episode. This is after their third date. They up in um, Oliver's apartment. They, they, they getting all touchy-feely and acupuncture guy is ready to put it on, is ready to to get it in with um with um with olive oil 
but olive oil is being runny as usual. She's like, oh, 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 oh. All right, give me a second. And then she runs into the bathroom. We come to realize that it's not the fact that she hasn't fleeted herself. It's not the fact that she's not really into the guy. But there's something that needs to be said that she hasn't said. And due to the fact that she didn't establish it from the beginning, she now feels some kind of way. So she goes out, you know, after punch a guy is ready to throw her up against the wall and take those moose shoe pancakes from her, you know, ready to put some syrup on them. You know, put some syrup on the mushy pancakes of um, olive oils. You know, he's taking off his drawers. He's ready to get it in. And then the next thing you know, olive oils motherfucking ass says, I'm Paz. See, this is why I can't stand this bitch. You mean to tell me after all this fucking time... You know, these three dates, you never mentioned you never mentioned your status to him. So all of a sudden, we see Thomas completely flips the script. He does a complete 180. He's like, well, you know, um, maybe I, you know, jumped too soon. Uh, you know, he it's like he immediately just goes backwards and he and he's like, uh, you know, I'm glad you told me this, but you know, I don't think we're we're ready for this. I don't think we're 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 really um that compatible. And all of a sudden he's like, This is really new to me and then Oliver's and then Olive Oil's like, Yeah, it's new to me too. So here it is, you dump Connor for this, olive oil, your runny ass decided to do this out of everything, like, you didn't think to let your status be known before you got with this guy, so at least if you got with the guy, the guy would know your status and that would not be an issue, you didn't think about letting, letting putting that on front street? That you're a man who's paused, but you're looking to meet and be and uh, you know meet and greet, and you know you're looking for a connection. Like you didn't think to put that out there, so you just had this guy going, and then all of a sudden when he's ready to take the mushy pancakes from you, all of a sudden now I'm paused. You know which? See if. If if olive oil was was the one who who was um, under that under that sheet, I would not be mad because she needed to be under that sheet for that bullshit. And oh boy, just completely flipped the script. So that's done. Now we see that Annalise and Bonnie are talking, and they're talking, and that you know they I think they have a conversation about Frank, and you know they're looking at this um the, you know this report. And then the next thing you know, things start coming to Annalise, and then she realizes, okay, this is this is an interesting development because what we end up finding out is that she she comes to the conclusion that oh girl, um, Edith actually poisoned herself, and this is going this is what she comes from the revelation of, of her and Bonnie's conversation and then also looking at um looking at the news, it just pops in her mind that she poisoned herself. You know, and she's trying to take down her children. Next thing you know, she lets Laurel know that look, Laurel she said, I can't argue this in, in court, but you can. So she puts Laurel, you know, in first chair to let her argue the case, and she's like, well, why you choose me? She says, because you're my puppet. And I was like, Italy, serve that bitch. Yeah, you want to talk your shit, but I'm the one giving you an opportunity to get an A on your midterm. Yeah, so let that shit be known. So we actually see, while they're in the case, you know, um, Laurel is right now arguing the case, and... 
At first she's stumbling and Laurel's horrible at it. But then Laurel finally gets together and starts asking those probing questions to get her to confess that, you know, that Edith was behind poisoning herself. And after she does that, Edith finally confesses that, yes, you know, some people take their mothers for granted. And I thought by doing this, you know, I would teach my children a lesson. So by you damn it, by by you killing, by by you attempting murder on yourself, you think that was going to teach your children a lesson? Like, look, that that damn crazy bitch need to be put away because she she was a fucking mess. She <laughs> she was a, she was fucking horrible. But that was a really good case though. Uh, next, we also have a scene where Annalise and Wes run into each other. He lets them know he he lets her know that he ran into Nate, and um, and they also talk about the alibi, or whatever. And Wes is pretty much now running out of options. Annalise says that look, stop worrying yourself and stop beating yourself up because you're, this will not this will be disrespectful to your mother's memory. And I didn't go all this way with you for you to just up and give up like this. So she immediately kind of sets what's up like, look, you know, we're going we gonna to get through this. We're going to find a way. But, you know, you need to just not, not get into that. Next thing you know, we have a scene with Frank and Bonnie. You know, Bonnie's right now watching the, the, um, the news of, um, about Charles Mahoney. All of a sudden, Frank comes over, and she gives Frank the fucking business. She's like, oh, so I'm the second place you stopped here? Because I'm pretty sure you went to Laurel's house first. So I'm just swapping seconds to you. You know, I give you my goodies, and then all of a sudden, the next day you gone, I don't get a, I don't get a, um, I don't get a thank you card, I don't get a text, I don't get a phone call, I don't get shit. And, and if anything, like, Bonnie is completely in her feelings, and we can actually see that both of them, since they are both emotionally distraught individuals, they kind of feed off of one another. And next thing you know, she pretty much says that, yeah, I should have fucked, uh, yeah, Annalise should have killed Joe, and uh, Annalise really should have killed Joe ass. And she just goes off on him and, like, tells him to get the hell out. Next thing you know, we see Frank is groveling like a little boy. He's crying his eyes out. So we really see that, yeah, he's in love with Bonnie. He really does have love for Bonnie because they have this close connection and they've been with each other for over a decade. And she pretty much tells him, Get out! And then he finally gets up and he leaves. But I'm like... But yeah, Frank, come on now. You know, you pretty much get her booty, and then she come in there with some, with with some bran muffins and um, some lattes. You know, after you done, you know, smoked her goodies, and then she come in, and the room is clean, and there's no sign of you, and you just up and left, didn't tell her shit. So, and she said that, look, I was about to betray Annalise for your ass, and this is how you pay me back. So yeah, she she was done. Next thing you know, uh, Oliver, aka Olive Oil, goes to see Connor. So I'm like, okay, bitch. Then and he's drunk as fuck too because he and his feelings that old boy um, Thomas rejected him after he found out he was positive. But I don't feel sorry for the bitch. I just don't. Next thing you know. She goes to Connor, and he's pouring out his heart and his soul, and he's like, I, I really miss you, Connor. I really am, I really feel some kind of way right now, and, you know, I, I, I feel wrong for coming to you. And, you know, Connor, since Connor still loves him, Connor's like, it's okay, because I really do miss you, and I still want you. Next thing you know, they snatch. And I'm like... See, that's why I've been calling him Olive Oil since this season opened. Because she, because Olive Oil has emotional diarrhea. And it's like the oil doesn't go too far from the olive when it comes down to Oliver. So that's the reason why I was going in on him. Because it's like, dude, here it is. You broke up with him saying you needed space. Then you get involved with Thomas 
And because Thomas rejects you because of your HIV status, you go running back to Connor. Because Connor is the man, is the love of your life. Connor is the only one who has openly accepted you for who you are, even though Connor is not HIV positive. And even though, yeah, you know, your, your HIV is, under, is, uh, is, um, is, un, is undetractable, you know, and even though you explain this to Thomas, Thomas feels like, oh, hell nah. You know, he openly accepted you. So the fact that you thought that you was going to break up with Connor and that you was going to bounce back and you, you, you was just going to have, you know, Dix a million hunting you down, you a stupid bitch for that. So, yeah, have several fucking seats olive oil. But you lucky that Connor decided to take you back or you really would have been in your feelings. You probably have been crying yourself. You probably have been crying yourself to sleep for numerous of nights if Connor decided not to take you back. But it made me get uh, a higher moral respect for Connor because Connor took him back and Connor was like, look, you know, we're going to work this out. Next thing you know, um, Next thing you know, we actually see uh, Michaela Asher, you know, uh, uh, you know, coming home, and then next thing you know, they see both, uh, you know, um, Connor and Oliver sitting right next to each other, and Oliver is like all happy. He's like, "Oh yeah, my gay brothers are back! I love you guys!" And then like Michaela's like, "Asher," he's like, "Sorry, bros, I gotta go." <laughs> Asher is the fucking best. I love Asher. That's a trip. Uh, next, we actually, uh, you know, we actually see that Laurel and Wes is on the phone. They talking to each other, you know, doing all these, you know, pretty much, you know, you know, love talking over the phone. And the next thing you know, she turns around, and we see in the glare from the glass, Frank is in her apartment. And then he finally gets the attention of Laurel. And he's right in her fucking apartment. And I'm like, wow. That shit's it's, it's about to go down next week in regards to that. Um, next, we go back to two weeks um, to two weeks later. You know, um, Laurel, who's pretty much um, in critical condition, begins to gasp for air. And we actually see that, yeah, Laurel's still alive. Um, Maggie, who's pretty much an intern at the hospital, is trying to attend to her and say that, look, you know, you need to calm down. Everything's going to be okay. You know, you need to, you know, slow down. I mean, she pretty much is trying to calm her down. And then she says that she needs to talk, so she kind of lets her know she wants to write something down. So she gives her something to write on, and she asks about Wes. And next thing you know, we see Wes is actually meeting with, um, is actually meeting with the prosecutors, you know, pretty much we see that uh, there's um, some documents with him getting immunity. But then he's like, oh no, this needs to be in here, that needs to be in here, this needs to be in here, that needs to be in here. So um, if, you really if you really want me to take her down and tell you everything I know, you need to revise this before I sign my name. So I'm like, Wes is the one who snitched on Annalise. So, I'm like, that motherfucking West. It's like West is pretty much in the middle of every fucking thing. And it's crazy. But, that's my review for How to Get Away with Murder. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Leave comments. You know, share this video. And I will be back with you guys next week for another episode of How to Get Away with Murder. Man, this is really getting good. But, uh, until then, guys, take care.